you, Rudolf. It's lovely to be here. Lovely to be here. It's a bleak miracle. <laughs> God himself would be hard pushed to point this place out on the map, wouldn't he? <laughs> My sat nav, not actually being omnipotent, gave up just outside Shepton Mallet. Actually, <laughs> gave up. Now, I don't know if any of you have been in the situation when you've asked for directions to road near Froome, when you've been on a road near Froome. <laughs> Well, it turns out everybody around here thinks they're a fucking comedian. <laughs> <laughs> the accent's Scottish. By the way, I should just mention that it's not French. It's an easy mistake to make. It's Scottish. I'm originally from Glasgow. I'm the grey country. <laughs> Don't worry, you won't find any of those prehistoric unreconstructed sexist attitudes if you go for a rummage around down the front of my trousers. <laughs> That's all I know. I thought it would be more fun to do than that, and Rebecca just felt a bit different. Not in a good way. Uh, oh, kind of related to that, I was on the train and I, and I overheard a group of five or six Older women, women of a certain age, uh, they called me young man as I passed, so I'll give you some idea of how old they were. <laughs> Very respectable women, uh, and we were having a conversation, one of those parlour games, talking about the worst inventions of the 20th century. I was thinking nuclear missiles, napalm, and machine guns, they were in there. It's man thinking. Uh, one of the women just went immediately, she went, no. Worst invention of the 20th century, without a doubt, Viagra. <laughs> I thought there'd be some argument, but there was an immediate consensus. Yeah, Viagra. Yeah, definitely that. Because they, they seem to agree that their husbands and their partners were actually much nicer blokes when they weren't wandering around with a permanent hard on. <laughs> Uh, one of them even said his erectile dysfunction is the only reason I feel able to sit in the room with him in the evening, watching television, and not be overcome with an urge to stab him in the face. <laughs> <laughs> <Of> course, <laughs> with Viagra, she would have the option of stabbing him in the face with his own erection. <laughs> See how he likes it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm playing with my hair, it's a bit long at the minute, but I, I, I can't go back and get it done because I had a horrible, horrible experience the last time I got it cut. It's not so much the cut itself because I'm of that age when, you know, expectations are pretty fucking low. <laughs> <laughs> not much hope of me wandering out looking like Justin Bieber. <laughs> not that funny. <laughs> These days it's just a relief if I don't walk out looking like Donald Trump. <laughs> but it kind of, I was thinking about that. What does Donald Trump ask for when he goes for a haircut? Because <laughs> you have to ask for something pretty extraordinary, I think, to walk out looking as if you've just had Vanessa Phelps' fanny nailed to the top of your head. <laughs> Oh, oh, oh. That's an image you won't forget. <laughs> uh, the thing about the haircut was, it, it's, it's not I say not the haircut so much as, thankfully you can't see it in this light from this angle, but I'm a little bit thinner back there than I'd like to be. Well, you might have noticed it, I don't know. But I, I get kind of sad about it, even talking about it, I can get a little bit emotional. Oh, oh. Oh. It's not actually a prank, but it's kind of you to make the effort. <laughs> I'm a little bit balding. That's the thing. I noticed that about five years ago. So for the last five years, every time I've been for a haircut, I've always said to the hairdresser, whatever happens, please, at the end of the haircut, please, 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 don't show me the back of my head. <laughs> I go for a haircut in my hometown of Glasgow and the girl there not only shows me the back of my head but she compounds the crime by saying look, it's not as bad as you thought it was. <laughs> not as, it was five years fucking worse than I remember. I felt like grabbing the mirror, running round behind her and going look, your arse isn't as big as you thought it was. <laughs> Wait a minute, I'll get the other mirror, then you can see all of it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 
I didn't want to do that, mostly because I didn't think of it till I was already back at the hotel, licking my wounds. That's not a euphemism. I'm not that flexible. Massaging my ego. That is a euphemism. While listening to Radio 4, Chris, let's face it, that's about the only form of entertainment still available to a man of my age and demographic. And I don't know if there's any Radio 4 listeners in, but it's not particularly entertaining. <laughs> not unless your idea of entertainment is being grabbed by the throat first thing in the morning, thrown to the floor, and then beaten around the ears for hours and hours and hours and end with a big sock filled with other people's stupid fucking opinions. <laughs> <laughs> Who's the daddy now? <laughs> But it's not Radio 4, it is people's opinions that bother me. I, I, I've got this kind of theory that there's an almost, an almost universal physical law that can be applied to other people's opinions. That the less well-informed an opinion is, the louder it's going to be. That's the law. It's something that a social physicist might refer to as the Clarkson. Principle. <laughs> it's the same principle that renders Daily Mail readers physically incapable of lowering their fucking voices on trains. <laughs> no matter how hard you hit them. <laughs> and if you are ever tempted to hit a Daily Mail reader, and I do thoroughly recommend it, always with the open hand, health and safety at all times. <laughs> but not that it's necessarily a bad thing, the old clerks in principle from a Comedian's perspective, actually quite a rich source of material. As you can imagine, if it wasn't for that, I don't think there's a chance in the world that I could have overheard, as I did recently. And, and this is from the other side of a crowded pub, mind you. One young man's opinion that, and I quote, the grey squirrel, and this is a fact, is one of nature's most cunning and devious paedophiles. <laughs> now, I don't know why I expected them to say, but it wasn't that. <laughs> Peter Fowl Squirrel, can you imagine what will happen if the tabloids get their hands in that one? I can see the front page of the sun right now, just a big headline, Pedo Squirrels. Maybe a map with a big red arrow pointing at Squirrel Nutkin's house. <laughs> Daily Mail, slight variation. Immigrant Pedo Squirrels. <laughs> The Glasgow Evening Times, balding West Region, in hairdresser arson attack. <laughs> but you might be asking, what did this young man base his opinion of the grey squirrel on? Doesn't really bear thinking about, does it? But as far as I could hear, and the entire fucking pub could hear, it appeared to be based solely on the look in the little fucker's eyes. <laughs> Isn't the most compelling empirical evidence I've ever heard. But I have to say, the PowerPoint presentation is very entertaining. It's probably always... Are there any students in the audience tonight? Any students? Any, no? Yeah. Oh, you're a student. <laughs> no, no. I'm a I'm a student again. It's a little fucking student, that was me. Yeah. Uh, but, but, so you've, you've, you've got... No, I'm not there. No. You're not there. No. <laughs> Parents of prospective students. Anybody who's expecting to have to send their kids to university in a few years? Yeah. Oh. 27,000 pounds in fees. 27. Frankly, I quite like a catheter properly fitted before somebody takes the piss. <laughs> I went to the student protests. Me, I went to the student protests in London. I was there. Mostly, as you'd expect from a man my age, I was on the sidelines with my arms folded, shaking my head disapprovingly, saying things like, that young man is no way to make a Molotov cocktail. <laughs> Do I have to do everything myself? That's it. But I kind of get caught up in the whole thing eventually. Uh, so much so, I don't know if you've heard of this, but I ended up being kettled for four and a half hours. The kettle doesn't really describe the, the thing they put you in. They put you in a kind of barriers and they prod sticks at you. It's like it's, it sounds kind of okay, kettled. It isn't. 
uh, but it was the cause of some hilarity in our house because I phoned my wife during the protest and, and she thought I'd said, put the kettle on. <laughs> and in fact, what I said was, I've just pissed myself and I think I might be bleeding to death. <laughs> <laughs> oh, put the kettle on. <laughs> but I have to say, despite the blood loss, actually one of the best days out I've had in years. <laughs> so I never thought I'd say this, but I'm quite pleased to have the Tories back. I really am. No, I am. Because at least you know where you are with the Tories. That's my view. In my case, flatten my back with my ears slowly filling up with blood. <laughs> Much like the last time they were in. Actually, it used to go to quite a lot. Did any of you go to protests when they were younger? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And then you would end up back at a party somewhere having wild... No. Just <laughs> brilliant... <laughs> brilliant sex with a complete stranger. No. Wrong party. Because that's what used to happen to me. This time, I went home to the wife. <laughs> Haven't even put the kettle on. <laughs> and the sex was shit. <laughs> that's her words, not mine. <laughs> but to be fair, she did recently tell me that I'm actually a wonderful and sensitive lover. Yeah. Though that might have been the rehypnol. <laughs> Before you get the wrong idea, in this particular instance, the Rehypnol, entirely self administered <laughs> says she can just about bear the sight of my naked body these days, so long as she can't remember it in the morning. <laughs> Thank you for that. It was so hard to believe that, wasn't it? Yeah. In lots of ways, I think actually Rehypnol has saved our ride. <laughs> It turns out she much prefers not to be conscious when we have sex. <laughs> frankly, I perform a lot better without the heckling. <laughs> or as she prefers to call it, constructive criticism. <laughs> There's two things about that. One, I don't remember asking. And two, fail to find anything constructive whatsoever, especially when I'm making love in the phrase, get off your shite. <laughs> <laughs> and on that note, I'm Miss David Roth. You were lovely. Thank you very much. Yeah.